That's drunk. Since we're nearing Halloween, let's take a look at the Super Nintendo edition of Bram Stoker's Dracula, which is based on the Francis Ford Coppola film of the same name, which in turn, of course, is based on the original Bram Stoker novel. And yep, that's right, this is the infamous Fred Fox game that launched a running gag for the angry video game nerd. And surprise, surprise, he gave this game a rather scathing review back in 2009. And well, yeah, this game really isn't particularly good. This game was everywhere for a short period of time, getting releases on Game Boy, NES, Sega Master System, Sega CD, DOS, and Amiga, but interestingly, each game is pretty different. For instance, the Sega CD version uses digitized backgrounds and incorporates full motion video from the movie. The DOS version, meanwhile, has a first-person perspective and is totally different than any of the other Dracula games. The Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis versions, however, are just side-scrolling platformers, and they're pretty much the same game, more or less. You play as Jonathan Harker, otherwise known as the Keanu Reeves character in the movie, with Van Helsing showing up here and there to help you out occasionally. You get five lives and two continues to get through six levels that each have a varying number of stages, with no saves or passwords. You have a health meter that's represented by these potion jars on the lower right, and B jumps, A attacks with your sword, and Y utilizes a special weapon you can pick up in each level, like a rifle, dynamite, or wooden stakes. The way the structure works here is that you've got this huge level laid out in front of you, and you simply follow the arrow at the top of the screen. If the level takes place indoors, the arrow leads you to Van Helsing, who tells you, or well, he thinks loudly, I guess, that there's an extra weapon that you can find somewhere. You can either set off and find it, or just go to the exit. Thankfully, in the first level here, the upgraded sword is just right over here, so you're not stuck with this pathetic knife attack for very long. I mean, jeez, it's like they made Lagoon a side-scroller. Just be aware, the weapon may be optional, but the exit to the level won't appear unless you find and talk to Van Helsing first. But if the level takes place outdoors, you just keep walking to the right and kill stuff. And yeah, as you can see, it's pretty standard action platforming stuff here, nothing all that unique, but there's nice little touches here and there. Like, hey, check out this drunk guy who can't even be bothered to get up and he's still tossing drinks at you. That's pretty funny. Or how about this part here with people screaming in the background? Now that is cool. The thing is though, there's so much this game gets wrong. The hit detection is shoddy at best, mostly because the sword attack is so flimsy. And don't expect any help from the other weapons you pick up because they all freaking suck. I mean, look at this. I'm getting James Bond Jr. flashbacks. That's a rifle? Why are the bullets bouncing off the walls? What is he, Gemini Man? Also, the boss fights are laughable. It's like each one had about 30 seconds of thought put into the design. Okay, so he raises the whip and then he puts it down. That's it. And then this one just shoots a pathetic laser beam and then puts up a weak looking barrier for a few seconds. Yeah, that's real creative. Despite all that though, I will say Bram Stoker's Dracula at least does a good job representing the whole Dracula motif. You'll see Lucy Westenra, Count Dracula's Three Brides, R.M. Renfield, and Dracula himself appears in multiple forms, so that's cool. Also, the visuals are good enough, and the music here really fits the game well. Plus, I mean, you're fighting skeletons in the fog in an old castle. Sometimes that's really all you need, right? So yeah, Bram Stoker's Dracula for Super Nintendo, and for Sega Genesis for that matter, aren't exactly worth going out of your way to play or anything, and there's much better choices out there, like the obvious stuff like Super Castlevania 4, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and there's even lesser known stuff like Nosferatu and Clock Tower that's preferable to this one as well. But, if you're looking for yet another game that fits that same Halloween motif that has a good creepy soundtrack, and you're looking for something better than that Frankenstein game I looked at last week, then this game will do in a pinch. Alright, I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.